Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jude Kelly, Artistic Director of South Bank Centre, and I'm sure you share with me the great excitement that we have tonight, J.K. Rowling, with us in the flesh. Um, <laughs> yes, isn't that marvellous? Good evening. I'll just explain how the uh, event will work. J.K. Rowling will begin with a short reading from the beginning of the Casual Vacancy, published this morning, officially at 8 a.m. Um, has anyone here read it yet? Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> it's very short. Part one. A casual vacancy is deemed to have occurred, A, when a local councillor fails to make his declaration of acceptance of office within the proper time, or B, when his notice of resignation is received, or C, on the day of his death. Sunday. Barry Fairbrother did not want to go out to dinner. He had endured a thumping headache for most of the weekend and was struggling to make a deadline for the no local newspaper. However, his wife had been a little stiff and uncommunicative over lunch, and Barry deduced that his anniversary card had not mitigated the crime of shutting himself away in the study all morning. It did not help that he had been writing about Crystal, whom Mary disliked, although she pretended otherwise. Mary, I want to take you out to dinner, he lied, to break the frost. Nineteen years, kids, nineteen years, and your mother's never looked lovelier. Mary had softened and smiled, so Barry had telephoned the golf club because it was nearby and they were sure of getting a table. He tried to give his wife pleasure in little ways because he had come to realize after nearly two decades together how often he disappointed her in the big things. It was never intentional. They simply had very different notions of what ought to take up most space in life. Barry and Mary's four children were past the age of needing a babysitter. They were watching television when he said goodbye to them for the last time and only Declan, the youngest, turned to look at him and raised his hand in farewell. That's all you're getting. Um, now, this is quite um, an intimate gig for you, because the last time you appeared in public, there were 80,000 80, people. people in the Olympic Stadium, yeah. an estimated billion people watching worldwide. We don't know how many people are watching on the live stream, but it's, pro it's probably not a billion. That actually makes me feel sick as you say that, and I've done it now. So, God, yes, that was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. Five years since the last Harry Book, as I say. So at what point in those five years had casual vacancy? Was it in your mind before that point, or is it, is it all since? No, it's, um, I, was, uh, I had the idea for the casual vacancy um, while I was on tour in America uh, for Deathly Hallows, and I had the idea on a plane. And, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Something about me and vehicles. Yeah. I, have to, I have to be moving, clearly, <laughs> to have an idea. <laughs> Although it's lucky it wasn't, because uh, famously the story of how Harry Potter began... The was a train. The train had stopped. Yes, yeah, so I'm going up market. But it, I was going to say... So the next idea will be space shuttle yeah, or something. It, it, it is made very, very clear that this is a different kind of book. Yes, it is. Um, I, genuinely, I genuinely think, and this may sit rather oddly with the list you've just read out that it is a humorous book. Some of the humor may be rather dark in places. Um, but yes, that's, that's, it's life in a small town. It's, it's life in a small town with everything that that entails. Hi, my name's Nikki, I'm just a massive fan. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to know what, it, what it's like to kind of see what was once just an idea on a plane transform into a manuscript, which then leads to all of this, really. Uh, absolutely amazing. Amazing. People, I actually thought that, exactly that tonight. I, I walked into the little green room that I've just been like holding pen. I've been waiting in while you all came in. And there was a pile of the books there. I hadn't seen them en masse. First time I'd seen a pile. And I had exactly that feeling. I did think, God, it's here, it's done. Fantastic, it's done, it's out there. Um, I did spend the first two years on this book telling myself, you don't have to publish this. Not because it's this, just because I was reveling in the thought that I had no contract, no one knew what I was doing. It was a, just a lovely place to be in after Potter, which 
latterly, there was so much pressure involved, you know. People were always waiting for the next book three seconds after I published a, a Harry Potter book. And so I spent a couple of years really luxuriating in the feeling that no one knew what I was doing. But I always knew I was going to publish it. You know, I, was, I did. Uh, you, setting aside Salinger, you write to be published. So it's, tonight's lovely. It's a celebration. It feels good. What I would like to know is the writing process for you. Um, do you find it easier to write when you're inspired or sit down at nine o'clock every morning and have your time that you've allotted for writing and the and inspiration just comes to you? Um, it's really got to be the latter. And I think that inspiration, you, this, may, this may be a, an unromantic thing to say, but I think you can make inspiration come. I have worked myself into a state of inspiration. Um, <laughs> Because if you literally sit around waiting for your muse to hand you perfectly formed stories, it's never going to happen. I think that you, inspiration is clearly necessary, but then comes the hard, hard, hard slog of writing. And um, it's a dog's life, really, when I stop and think about <laughs> it, but I need to do it. If you, if you need to do it, you will do it. You know, that's, that's always been the way, I think, with writing. But, uh, no, I do have a, a loose-ish routine. I definitely... I used to put in all-nighters, but I'm not as young as I was. So <laughs> these days, the earlier I start work writing, the better, and I, I, I will get more done, and I will get better work done. So early in the morning is a good time to start, and I can go for hours at a stretch that way. Um, but no, I definitely don't get up in the morning and think, am I inspired? <laughs> no, I'm not. I won't work. Because, God, how often would I ever work, you know? Thank you, Miss Rowling. God bless you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to reading this. Thank you. Have a good day.